Welcome to SecuraKey's SKNet software training series. In this program, we will cover the key features and functions of this versatile yet easy to use system. To begin, let's take a look at the transaction screen. The transaction screen displays all system activity, card events that are valid, system violations such as void cards, and system generated events such as door opened via PC. Transactions are displayed in a list with the most recent event displayed at the bottom of the screen. Also, there are many different filters available to generate specialized reports which can be printed in color. Transaction filters. First select transactions, then select the filter icon. The transaction filter screen allows you to select any combination of filters to generate your customized reports. Transaction reports. For transaction reports, select transactions, then click on the printer icon. To print the report, click on the print icon. To save the report to Excel, HTML, text, or PDF formats, click on the export icon, as shown here. Select the type of report you wish to save and click OK to save the report. This option allows you to save the report or send it via email. Transactions for an access group. For a quick view of transactions for a specific access group, simply select the desired access group and then select transactions. This will allow a quick view of all the users that belong to a specific access group. Archive transactions. It is a good idea to archive your transactions because if the file gets too large, approximately 75,000 transactions, it will start to slow down your computer. It is recommended to archive monthly, quarterly, or annually, depending on the activity level of your system. Creating a transaction archive file. To begin, left-click on Transactions. Select Archive. Select New Append. Append will add these files to an existing file or you may want to start with a new one. To add current transactions to an existing file, just click on the down arrow and select an existing file. If you want to create a new file, select New. Now you may name the new file and select the beginning dates and ending dates that you wish to archive. Viewing Archived Transactions. Select the archived file. After retrieving the archive file, you can use any of the filters required to generate custom reports as needed. User Reports First, select users from the Explorer screen. From the User view, click on the Printer icon down arrow and select the report you wish to create. To save the report, click on the Export icon. Then select the type of report you wish to save Make all your selections and click OK to save the report. To print the report, select the printer icon. Make your selections and click on print. Changing the names of user fields. If the current user fields do not match your needs, then you may change them. First, left click on File. Select Preferences. Select the User Field Labels tab. Now, just select any field and replace the default name with your own custom definition. Time Zones A time zone is a schedule that governs when a card is valid, or allowed access, and when it is invalid, or denied access. Each time zone has a 24-hour schedule for each day of the week, as well as an eighth day programmed as a holiday. Any date defined as a holiday will use the holiday time zone programming instead of the normal weekday programming. SKNet has 16 time zones. Time zone 0 is always void, void users access group. Time zone 1 is always valid, master users access group. Time zones 0 and 1 cannot be edited. Time zones 2 through 15 can be edited any way you choose. Location, or global, time zones can be edited for all readers from the Explorer screen. You can also edit a time zone for a specific reader. 
Global and Reader Time Zones. To select a global time zone to edit, double click on Time Zones from the Explorer tree. To select a reader time zone to edit, right click on the reader name and select Properties. Select the Door Controls tab. Left click on the Time Zones button. This allows you to have different time zones for each reader. The green blocks are valid times and the red blocks are void times. To change the color of the block, just click on it. If you want to select a whole range, 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. for a single day, just hold down the control key, then click the first and last block and they will all be filled in between. The holiday settings are used for any defined holidays in the system. Anti-passback settings are selected if you're going to use either timed anti-passback or real anti-passback, in or out. Start, end delay lets you define start or end times between the half hour block. Valid dates allows you to assign a start date or an end date to a time zone. Just uncheck the box and enter the desired date. Access Groups An access group is a set of cardholders who are valid at the same readers and have the same time zone restrictions. Groups are ideal for multi-departmental facilities with different time schedules. SKNet automatically creates two default access groups. The Master User Group always includes all the readers in the location and uses Time Zone 1, always valid. A master user will always have access to all readers 24-7. The Void User Group always includes all readers in the location and uses Time Zone 0. Users in this group will never be granted access, but the transaction history will always show a transaction when a card from this group is used. Creating a new access group. The first thing you need to do before creating a new access group is to define a time zone for the proper times the group is allowed access. To create a new access group, right click on the location name, select new, select access group. Enter a name for the new access group. We recommend a name which describes the group of users. Then enter the time zone that you have defined for the group. Adding readers to a new access group. After creating a new access group, you will notice that there are no readers listed in it. To add a reader or readers to an access group, select a reader from the connection group and left click. Keep the button pressed and drag it to the new access group, drag and drop. Verify that all the proper readers have been dragged and dropped into the new access group. Finally, update the readers by clicking on Send Users Full to complete your changes. Door Schedule A door schedule is a time zone that is specifically assigned to a door, which causes the door to automatically lock and unlock according to a regular weekly time schedule. This schedule unlocks the door to allow everyone entry without having to use a valid card. The LED, with the Secure Key Reader, will be flashing green to let you know that you do not need to use your card. The door schedule can be set up globally or individually per reader. Globally is only used when you want all the readers to unlock and lock using the exact same schedule. To set up all readers with the same door schedule, global, Double click on Door Schedule. The green blocks indicate the times the door will be unlocked. Automatic will unlock the door at the scheduled time. Card Activate, the door will unlock after the reader sees a valid card read. Door Schedule for a single reader. To add a door schedule to a single reader, the most common setup, just right click on the reader name and select Properties, select the Door Controls tab. The green blocks indicate the times the door will be unlocked and select Send to send to the reader. Inputs. 
Inputs are circuits that connect external sensors or switches to an SK-ACP or 28SA+. They are used to initiate special functions or to generate messages and transactions. There are eight different input definitions you can choose in SKNet. To select an input, right-click on a reader and select Properties. Select the Configuration tab, click on Edit, click on Change, select the desired input type, click OK, then Send to the reader. Note, Remote Open is the most common input used. This input activates the latch relay for the same time as a valid card use. A door open via sensor message appears in the transactions. Outputs. The SKACP has a latch relay and an auxiliary relay for each reader. This auxiliary relay can be activated by a variety of means to accomplish various functions. To program an output, right click on a reader and select properties. Select the Configuration tab. Click on Edit. Click on Change. Select the desired output type. Click OK, then Send to the reader. The card range is one of the most popular outputs used. Cards in a selected range will activate the auxiliary relay only or both the auxiliary and main relays. Typically, this is used so specific cards can cause something special or extra to happen. The relay can also be set to toggle mode. Holidays. Any date that is designated as a holiday will follow the holiday schedule for time zones 2 through 15 and in the door schedules you have created. Up to 32 holidays can be programmed, either globally or separately for each reader. Readers can all have different holidays if desired. To program global holidays, left click on Holidays from the Explorer tree. Select the plus to add a date. Click on the down arrow for the calendar to select the date. Click on the Send button to send the holidays to all of the readers. Program holidays for each reader separately. There might be a need to have a holiday programmed for a single reader, not globally. Right-click on a reader and select Properties. Select the Door Control tab, then select Holidays. Double-click on the Holiday Number. Click on the down arrow for the calendar. Select the Date. Click on Send to send the holiday to the reader. Facility codes. Access cards used with SecuraKeys access control systems utilize two encoded numbers. The ID number is different for each card. This ID number is assigned to each card user so that SKNet can track who is using the system and when it is being used. The facility code is the same for each card. This code prevents other people who may be using a similar system in the facility to gain access to yours. When a card is read, the system first verifies the facility code before it checks the ID number to see if the card is valid or void. Adding a facility code. The SKACP can learn up to 16 facility codes. While it is best to have a single facility code, it is not always convenient. Right-click on the reader name and select Properties. Select the Service tab. Select Edit. Select Send to All. Adding a facility code. Software. If you know what the facility code is, you can add it from the software. Right-click on the Reader Name and select Properties. Select the Service tab. Select Edit. Select Add. Enter the value for the facility code. Select Close. Finally, select Send to All. This will send the new code to all the readers in your system. To add a MLD license number, go to Help and select Upgrade System. Select MLD 
and enter the license number located on the inside cover of the SKNet manual. Click on Register. This will enable the MLD feature for 30 days or until you receive your activation key. Note, if you do not have an MLD license number, you may order it and use this temporary number as shown on the screen. But please, do not register. Register the MLD version. Complete the registration form and select the registration method to receive the activation key. Enter the activation key to complete the MLD installation. Thank you for taking the time to watch this instructional video. If you have any questions, comments, or need assistance, please call SecuraKey at 800-891-0020 or email technical support at techsupport at securakey.com.